Bristol Myers, makers of Ipana for the smile of beauty, and Fouché, the beforehand lotion, present the Eddie Cantor Show. And Joe was so in love, oh, so in love, so much in love. In the hall for hours they would stay. When Josephine came in, she'd hear her mother say, Josephine, please no lean on the bell. When you neck, please no break at the bell. I heard Mrs. Caruso telling Mrs. O'Flynn, somebody keeps ringing, but nobody comes in. You can squeeze all you please, that's all right. But don't keep us from sleep every night When you kiss in the hall Stay away from the wall Josephine, please no lean on the bell When you come up from work And you want to sup I'm a cook of the nice and macaron Then you make a sit down And you make a get up For your fella, he call on the phone You go to the park And you sit in the dock And you make it what they call it a pet It's lipstick here and the lipstick there You know get it from eating spaghetti You say good night about 11 o'clock That's what a good gal should do but you take it too long when you say the good night, you know, finish till half past two. Say, why are you no bringing your fella upstairs, ravioli with peppers I cook? You can make it the love with a kiss and a hug and the mom and the pop, they no look. Then I bring you up and I make you fat with a soup and a pasta vazool. Now you stay up late and I make you tear. What's the matter? You making me fool? Well, you know I get married and raise the fam and I make you promise I keep. I'll buy you the furniture and pay for your rent and we all can get us some sleep. Josephine, please no lean on the bell. When you neck, please no break in the bell. I heard Mrs. Scalino say she called the police. The landlord, he say he's going to break in the lease. All is still, just as still as a little mouse. Till your charm spread alarms through the house. Won't that guy ever leave every night New Year's Eve? Josephine, she's holding on the back. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and Kenny Delmar. Wasn't this a wonderful New Year's Eve? Ah, uh, yeah, the whole country got in the spirit of the thing. That's right. I saw pictures in the newspaper. One picture of President Truman watching the clock in the White House, ready to blow a whistle. One picture of Governor Dewey watching the clock in the state capitol, ready to blow a horn. And one picture of Mayor LaGuardia watching the clock at City Hall, ready to blow. <laughs> Yeah, Fiorello and the old year went out at the same time. Yeah, but really it was sad seeing LaGuardia leave City Hall. First came the moving men with his desk. Then some clerks came out with his files. Then his secretary came out with his briefcase. When did LaGuardia come out? Who do you think was in the briefcase? <laughs> well, I'll bet, I'll bet the mayor felt kind of blue leaving City Hall for the last time on New Year's Eve. Yes, Kenny, but at least Fiorello had company. He wasn't the only half pint to disappear on New Year's Eve. <laughs> But Fiorello did a great, sincere job, didn't he, Eddie? Oh, you said it. And already he's missed. Only one day and he's missed. Two days. Especially by the firemen. Today I passed by a fire station and saw six firemen at half mast. <laughs> six firemen at half mast? Yeah, in memory of LaGuardia, they only slid halfway down the pole. <laughs> Well, Eddie, I hope you had as much fun New Year's Eve as the gang did at your party. Oh, I sure did. But, Kenny, after the party, you should have seen me over at Times Square all dressed up. I had on my tails, white tie, and one of those derbies that fold up. Oh, no, wait a minute, Eddie. You're thinking of a high silk hat. A derby doesn't fold up. It does not Times Square on New Year's Eve. <laughs> right? Well, this New Year's Eve, there was a record-breaking crowd in Times Square. He's telling me, and such pushing, the pushing and the shoving and the shoving and the push. My suspenders broke at 42nd Street, and my pants didn't fall down until I got to 59. <laughs> at 59, somebody started to pick them up for me. Huh? 72nd Street. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Eddie, there's, uh, there's one thing I can't understand. Perhaps you can explain it. Yep. With millions of people celebrating New Year's Eve, throwing confetti, tearing up newspapers, discarding horns, New York streets are so clean. Why is that? I'll let you in on something, Kenny. Here in New York, we have a special place where we throw all our dirt and rubbish. Oh, uh, what do you call it? The subway. <laughs> Such a mess. And, Kenny, did you read about that flood they had in the subway the other day? Yeah, Eddie, is it true that at one station the water rose four feet high in one of the trains? Yeah, and that was the first time in the history of the subway the men got up and let the women sit down. 
Well, speaking of the subway, Eddie, I imagine with so many people out this New Year's, transportation must have been quite a problem. Yes. Would you believe that these boys here in Leonard Seuss's orchestra, they had to sit on the curb for over an hour waiting for a patrol wagon? <laughs> and what a wild night. Uh, but I love to watch people on New Year's Eve. For instance, there's the girl who has a good time but doesn't drink. All she wants from life is the olive out of your martini. So all night long she keeps dunking her mitt in your, in your drink, grabbing the olive. Finally, when you pass out, she accuses you of not being able to hold your liquor. When it's drinking her nail polish, that did it. <laughs> By the time you get to a doctor, you swallow so much nail polish, they have to use a buffer on your stomach. <laughs> and then, Kenny, yeah. then there's the fella. You, you must know. The fellow who seems to be fine all evening till you're ready to leave. Then he folds up. So you're quick, get his coat, his hat, his muffler. Run out and get a cab. Run back, dress him. Help him into the cab. Take him home. Take his key out of his pocket. Hold him up with one hand. Open the door with the other. Push him in. And the minute he steps inside his house, he sobers right up, fixes himself something to eat and goes to bed. He's fast asleep and you're stuck somewhere in Brooklyn. Eddie, I enjoyed the party you gave the gang this New Year's Eve. Do you always celebrate by throwing a party? Oh, no, Kenny. Last New Year's, I went to Ciro's in Hollywood. What a time. By 12 o'clock, Jack Benny... <laughs> Jack Benny was under the table. Under the table, Jack Benny. Well, I didn't think Jack Benny was a drinking man. How long was he under the table? Till someone paid the check. <laughs> Benny really hid under the table? You can ask Ann Sheridan. She was sitting there laughing at the whole thing. <laughs> well, I'd like to have seen that. Jack Benny under the table? No, Ann Sheridan laughing. Because if there's anything I go for, it's a beautiful smile. And if you want a beautiful smile, friends, the thing to go for is Ipana toothpaste. For Ipana toothpaste and gum massage is wonderful to help keep uh, teeth sparkling. Tell them, tell them, don't stutter, tell them. Yeah, well, you've got to keep... Tell them, it's a commercial, son. I said it's a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say that, that uh, gum massage is wonderful to help keep teeth sparkling, gums healthy. And it's firm, healthy gums, you know, that are so important to sound teeth and an attractive smile. So when brushing your teeth with Ipana toothpaste... Remember to massage a little extra Ipana on your gums. Then notice the difference. In healthier gums, brighter teeth, a more sparkling smile. Begin now to use Ipana toothpaste and gum massage. You know, Kenny Delmai was happy to have the whole cast over for my party New Year's Eve, but since I was unable to invite our radio audience, I'd like to turn back the clock to Monday night... And let them all look in on the way our gang welcomed in the New Year, all right? The place Eddie Cantor's apartment, New Year's Eve, where we find Eddie's New Year's Eve party in full swing. I'm hungry. Me too. I wonder if he'd miss me if I sneaked out to get a sandwich. Quiet, here he comes with that bell again. Happy New Year! Happy New Year, everybody! Now, isn't a party like this better than going out with some club? It sure is. Happy New Year! <laughs> Hey, how about some noise? Didn't I give horns to all of you? Yeah, we're too weak to blow them. Yep. Leonard Seuss. Seuss, why don't you put that horn in your mouth? Put mustard on it and I'll eat it. <laughs> now, stop hinting. The food I sent out for should be here any minute. What time is it now? Eleven o'clock. It is? Well, one thing you got to admit. One thing you got to admit. I, I sure know how to hold my liquor. Hold it? You got it locked up in a closet. Yep. Stop hinting. I sent for food and drinks over two hours ago and they... Hello? Hello? How do you do? Why, it's Ray Gordon, the mad Russian. Russian? Yeah. I sent you out for food two hours ago. I want you to come over to my party right away. There's nothing to eat. What? I want you to come over to my party right away. There's nothing to eat. That's a silly invitation. <laughs> Will you stop clowning? I sent you out to get 50 sandwiches. What's taking you so long? I got the sandwiches, but I've been standing here on the corner waiting for a taxi. How long have you been waiting? How long does it take to eat 50 sandwiches? <laughs> Russian, I'm through with you. I'm fed up. I eat 50 sandwiches, he's fed up. <laughs> Look, Russian, forget about getting food at the delicatessen. There's a lot of food in the house you can prepare. Very well. I will prepare a buffet. Buffet! Buffet? That's buffet. The tea is always silent. <laughs> Not when I drink it. <laughs> Never mind. Will you jump in a taxi and come right up here? I can't find a taxi I like. You like? Why are you so particular? I want a taxi with a woman driver. <laughs> Why must you have a taxi with a woman driver? <laughs> <laughs> 
silly boy. The rush will be over soon, and he's bringing the food. Well, that's good, Eddie, because while you were on the phone, the servicemen you invited came over. Oh, here they are. Happy New Year, boys! Happy New Year! Hi, Eddie! Hiya, Popeye! Uh, Eddie, isn't it good to see the boys back with their girls for New Year's? I'll say, Kenny, and are the women glad to have their servicemen back? Tonight, downstairs, here in the wall over the Wedgwood Room, I saw one girl dancing with the colonel. She was holding him so tight, the eagle on her shoulder laid an egg. <laughs> Oh, that's nothing. I got a million of them. I got a million of them. If you got a million of them, what do you want to tell that one for? <laughs> <laughs> Say, Thelma, Thelma, to start the party rolling, how would you and Leonard Seuss like to do a little tune for the boys and their dates? Yeah, let's go. Oh, 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 how about it's been a long, long time, fella? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Once again, it's been a long, long time. Haven't felt like this, my dear, since can't remember when. It's been a long, long time. You'll never know how many dreams I dreamed about you. Or just how empty they all seem without you. So kiss me once and kiss me twice and kiss me once again. I do for you, sir. I live next door, and you're making so much noise, I can't hear a word my wife is saying. <laughs> and you came here to complain? No, I came here to thank you. <laughs> Your wife talks a lot? I'll say. Her voice gets on my name. Yeah, her voice gets on your name? Well, what were you arguing about with your wife on New Year's Eve? Because I went out alone to a nightclub. Did she put those lumps on your head? Oh, no. These lumps are birth marks. Birth marks? Yeah, when I was born, my mother and father both let me have it. Tell me, did you have any fun at that nightclub you went to? Yeah, I met a beautiful girl, and she gave me her picture to put in my wallet. I wish I could see that picture. So do I. She's got my wallet. <laughs> well, how did this... How did the girl get away with your wallet? Well, we were dancing, and right in the middle of the dance, she disappeared. Well, why didn't you call a policeman? Who wants to dance with a policeman? <laughs> No, no. You see, he meant that you should call the police on the case. They can help you get your wallet back. I don't want my wallet back. You know what? Why not? My wife's picture is in it, too. Well, Happy New Year. Good night. Good night to you. Back and nylon's back. People are in the holiday spirit. I'll say they are. The Copacabana was jammed last year with 2,000 people. This year they had 4,000 people. Yeah, but Eddie, if they were jammed with 2,000, how did they get 4,000 people in this year? Gradles are back, too. <laughs> what do you say, boys and girls? Help yourself to the punch, all right? Let's go to a club. Yeah, I want to go to a club. Oh, no, listen, fellas. I can't go to a nightclub. I don't have any formal clothes. Oh, but, Eddie, you said you brought your dinner clothes to New York. I know, but when I opened my trunk this morning, no tuxedo. Just a big, fat morph. I didn't mind him eating the sleeves and the lapels, but when he sat there spitting the buttons at me, that was too much. <laughs> 
Well, Eddie, we've got to do something. It's nearly 12 o'clock and all the guests are hungry. I know, Kenny. I'm so starved, I'd settle for anything. A crumb. One crumb. Just a crumb. Somebody call me. Yeah. Hey, gang, he finally got here with the food. Hey, hey. Come on, go, Kenny. Hey. Come on, Hey, Russian, Russian, can you serve dinner right away? Most of course, yes. Yeah? Immediately, I will give everyone white coats. White coats? What for? No napkins. They'll have to wipe their hands on each other. Dog! <laughs> Some help you're going to be. I bet you don't know how to set the table properly either. Don't say that. That ain't bad. You see, yes. on the left there will be the punch bowl, and on the right there will be the gravy bowl. What about the sugar bowl? Oklahoma 33, St. Mary's right there. <laughs> Russia. Okay. Now, what about the big... <laughs> Don't put in an extra okay, will you? <clears throat> Maybe I'll get a raise. Yep, quiet. <laughs> You're lucky you don't get fired. Look, what about... What about the big layer cake we're going to have? Camper. Yes? Camper. Yes? There's bad news tonight. No. <laughs> I ruined the cake putting Happy New Year on it. How could that ruin the cake? My fountain pen leak. No! <laughs> Russian... What's the idea of writing Happy New Year on the layer cake with a fountain pen? I couldn't get the cake in the typewriter. No! Russian, go back in the kitchen and make some sandwiches, will you? Hey, come on, gang. Let's make this a real party. Hey, sailor. Sailor, what would you like us to sing? Oh, you know. You know, Leonard. Choose the Marine song. Hey, hey, look, fellas, look, fellas, give me a chance, will you? Chicory, chick, chalot, chalot, chickle a roll me in a banana. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, chicory. What branch of the service are you in? Who's in the service? I'm a poultry dealer from the Bronx. <laughs> Your little gold clock from the dresser has been stolen. Yes. Everyone in this room must submit to a search. Kemper, yes. you search all the men. That means that you'll search all the women. It does work out that way, doesn't it? <laughs> Russian, if that little gold clock is missing, the women will be searched by a woman. Kemper, you leave me one alternative. What's that? I'll put the clock back. <laughs> <laughs> Russian, Russian, all we want from you is food. Now get out and get some. And gang, gang, amuse yourselves. Okay. I'll be back at the stroke of 12 with a New Year surprise. Come on, Kenny. Now look, what's the surprise, Eddie? Look, I'm going to dress up as Father Time. Let's see, how can I make my hair gray? Why don't you just wash off the black? Yeah. <laughs> Kenny, are you insinuating I have to have my hair touched up? Well, listen, Fred Allen tells me you have so much... Black shoe polish in your hair. You don't know whether to comb it or lace it. <laughs> oh, Fred Allen's a fine one to be giving out beauty hints. With those bags under his eyes, he looks like a hepcat who said, give me some skin, and they did. <laughs> well, Eddie, I've been pretty good at helping to make women beautiful, especially their hands. Kenny, right now I'm interested in the hands on the clock. It's going to be 12 o'clock any minute, and I want to be ready as far the time. Well, in the meantime, I'd like to tell the people how Truche helps to safeguard hands. On the clock? No, on the women. Oh, what a surprise. You see, Truche is the new idea in hand lotion. Truche is the beforehand lotion. You use it before you do household tasks, before you do dishes or light laundry. But Truche is so effective that it will help guard your hands even in hot, soapy water. Help keep them soft and smooth and lovely. Of course, you can use Truche as you use any other hand lotion for chapped knees, chapped elbows, and as a powder base. But remember, Truche helps give you the added plus of beforehand protection when you need it. You'll find creamy, fragrant Truche really different, very helpful. So why not begin today to use Truche? Well, Kenny, it's nearly 12 o'clock. Make the announcement. Go ahead. Okay, Eddie. Gang, look who's here. Father Time and the New Year Baby. <laughs> Welcome, young fella. 
I'm Father Time, and I guess you must be the New Year's baby. Yes, sir. Well, before I leave, maybe I can give you a little advice to see that you get off on the right foot. You see, when I came in this time last year, it was in the middle of a war. What? What's a war? Son, you're off on the right foot already. You can concentrate on peace. On your way over here, did you notice a lot of happy boys and girls celebrating? Yeah. What made them so happy? Well, a lot of big things and a lot of little things. Like the girls were happy to get back their nylons. And the boys? The boys were just happy to get back. I hope... Son, I hope you see a lot of happiness. 1946. You got so much to look forward to. For instance, look at this picture. What is it? It's a picture of the new 1946 car. Already they've turned out 20,000 of these. 20 cars? No, pictures. <laughs> ah, but they tell us the car will be along any day now. And here's something else. Take good care of this little package. It's called the atomic bomb. Atomic bomb? Gee, that sounds important. It is. And how you and all the other years handled it will determine whether the world goes on in peace or goes out in pieces. Well, I'll try to be careful, old man, 1945. And before you leave, tell me where I go to live. You can go to my apartment. The address is... Uh... Why are you whispering the address of your apartment? If I don't whisper it, about eight million, eight million people will try to move in before you get there. <laughs> Everybody having a good time? Yeah. Hey, how about it, doll? You can all join in if you like. I love music and crowded places. I love people and such. I love singing and smiling faces. I don't care if I never go to bed, cause I'm having such a darn good time. I don't care if I never hit the hay. Never hit the hay. Never hit the hay. I don't care if I never hit the hay. Cause tonight is young and I feel fine. Tonight is Father Time's birthday. His anniversary. And that's a very good reason to sing this song with me. I don't care if I never go to bed, never go to bed, never go to bed. I don't care if I never go to bed, because I'm having such a darn good time. I don't care if I never wink asleep. Pardon me, I mean, never sleep a wink. I don't care, because I'm feeling in the pink, and I'm having such a darn good time. I don't care if I never snooze a tape. Pardon me, I mean, never take a snooze. I don't care, cause I'm doing what I choose, and I choose to have a down good time. I want a door or the ring bell, I'm feeling young and gay. I want a spot all the high hills, and I just dance away. I don't care if I never get to go, on me I mean, what I said. I don't care if I never go to bed, cause I'm having such a down good time. Eddie, you've given the cast this big surprise party, and in return, we have a little surprise for you. What's that, Kenny? Let me turn on the radio, and you can hear it for yourself. Listen. Ladies and gentlemen, from Washington, D.C., we are privileged to present one of World War II's outstanding military leaders. Known to his men as the G.I. General, he fought throughout the bitter campaign that led to victory in Europe, commanding more men than any other officer, leading the famous 12th Army Group. And now in peace, he serves the nation and those who fought for it as administrator of Veterans Affairs. Here is General Omar N. Bradley. I am here as a representative of our men and women in uniform and of those already out of the service. Let me congratulate you, Eddie, on the fine work you've done in helping to raise almost a million and a half gifts during the Give a Gift to a Yank campaign. I'm sure the men and women in hospitals deeply appreciated these gifts and a third Christmas was made more enjoyable than it might otherwise have been. 
Those gifts symbolize more than the generous American spirit at Christmas time. They represent America's assurance that the service of these soldiers, sailors, and Marines during the war will not be forgotten. With the fighting over and the nation facing many problems of war readjustment, there's a danger that time may dim our appreciation of the sacrifices made by the veterans in our hospitals. Such an attitude would create a feeling of cynicism and distrust. It would hinder the efforts being made to encourage our servicemen to take up the normal responsibilities of civilian life like any other citizen. I know you plan to continue your good work in behalf of these veterans, Eddie, and I hope many others join you. Entertainment, gifts, and other thoughtful consideration given to those in our hospitals will lighten their burden and help speed their recovery. It is a service that will mean much to those who gave. Kenny Delma and all of you gang here, that was one of the nicest surprises I ever got. And thank you, General Bradley. Speaking for the men and women of the entertainment world, I assure you that our wounded heroes in the Army and Navy hospitals will not be forgotten. We're starting next Wednesday evening at the Halloran Hospital here in Staten Island. We hope you'll all be listening in. You too, General Bradley. We let men... We met little men like you listening. We don't mind at all. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to remember... I love to spend each Wednesday with you as friend to friend. I'm sorry it's true. I'm telling you. Good night, everybody, and Happy New Year to you. The Eddie Cantor Show is written by Robert O'Brien and Irvin Ellenson. Here's something you should know about. It's Minute Rub, a really modern chest rub. It's greaseless and stainless. Disappears like vanishing cream so it can't stain clothes or bed linen. What's more, Minute Rub helps relieve that uncomfortable cold discomfort in a hurry. All you do is rub Minute Rub on your throat, chest, and back, and presto, in just about a minute, Minute Rub begins to bring a feeling of soothing, warm relief. So get a jar of Minute Rub now and get relief from annoying cold misery the modern way. The Greaseless Stainless Minute Rob Way. They be the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>